it's very likely that images and shapes will play an important part in your presentation. So yes, having got the text basics out of the way, let's now take a look at how to work with graphics on our slides. You'll remember we've got this new starters slide where I'm introducing three new team members. And before I bring their pictures in, I'm just going to make sure that the little text labels there are nicely distributed and aligned. So from the Arrange menu, I'm going to choose the option to align their bottoms and back to Arrange to make sure that they are spread evenly across the page. Perfect. So now, up on the toolbar, look for the Insert Image button, and this is where you can pick up any kind of picture file. So it could be photographs. In my case, it's going to be little cartoon characters, as you'll see. But obviously, you choose the location. For me, I'm going to upload from my local hard drive. So let's just have a look in the Pictures folder, and there they all are. So I'm just going to Control click to select all three of those and open them. Now, when you do bring in multiple pictures, they will all come through, and they are all now currently selected. So I can click in the middle of those and move all three of them around. But usefully, while they're all still selected, I can adjust the size of them all in one go to make sure they're all adjusted by the same amount. So I'm going to use a corner handle to do that, but be careful you don't squash them. Arr, let me just undo that. So hold down your shift key to keep them in proportion. So I'm going to make them all a bit smaller and then I can click away to deselect. And then if I just click on the top one there, there we go, I can move them into position and uh, line them up with their appropriate little text label there. And remember, as we move around, I've got these little guides that leap into action. So the red guides are showing me the position and the blue guides are showing me alignment or I'm just going to control and click to select all three of these. As we saw with the text labels, I can do that same sort of thing from the menu as well. So I'm just going to make sure that those three pictures are evenly distributed. And maybe these two pictures, let's just drag them downwards a little bit. There's the red line to indicate that they are aligned. Good. Having taken a bit of trouble with the alignment, I now might want to group each picture with its text label. So I'm just going to lasso Teresa and her picture and go back to that Arrange menu and choose to group those two objects. And if you like a keyboard shortcut, you can see it there. But this is also where we go to ungroup it if we change our mind. But let me just group that. And again, if I select Afwa and her picture, and choose the redo button up at the top left here to repeat my last action, which was to group the selected objects. And let's do the same for Shiv. Then that means that these objects, those grouped items can be clicked and dragged and moved around as one. But anyway, let me just undo to put Shiv back into position. Let me just click on the Teresa group. And then from the format menu, I'm going to choose format options. And that opens up this panel over on the right hand side. And there's an awful lot in here, but we'll have a quick look at some of the highlights. So for example, if I expand the size and rotation category, this is where I can specify precise sizes or scale of that object or even flip it. So if I click this flip horizontally button, I can have Teresa facing the other way, but it is a bit weird to do that with photographs of people because people do look different when you <laughs> make the mirror image, but you can see the options there. Also, if I expand the position option, I can control precisely where the selection is positioned on the slide. But if I now just click the image of Teresa in that group, I get a couple of other options appear. So recolor, for example. In fact, let me just collapse position and also size and rotation so that we can see what's going on. But recolor, anything I choose here is only going to apply to that little picture of Teresa. So if I click the drop down where it says no recolor and maybe choose, for example, this grayscale option, you can see it's done that there. To turn off any recoloring, I can choose no recolor. And actually, this is a nice little touch of localization, isn't it? Because that is indeed how we spell color <laughs> here in the UK. But also I've got some other adjustments that only apply to the picture as opposed to the text. And that's in this area here, including transparency. So I can click and drag this slider to make that picture of Teresa more transparent. And that would mean if I were to move that, for example, on top of a piece of text, you can still see the text underneath shining through because it's partly transparent. Let me just undo that. And also, if I just click on the uh, Teresa picture again, I can change the brightness and the contrast. And if you make a complete mess of it when you're just experimenting, happily, there is a reset option. Phew! I think these drop shadow and reflection options work better on a different graphic. So I'm just going to go back to the title slide where we had already put in that logo. So let me, for example, just do another bit of recoloring. And in fact, let's pick one of those accent colors from the theme to recolor the logo. Oh, nice. And maybe let's add a drop shadow. You can see the effect there. And I can change other settings about that shadow. So exactly the angle of the shadow or how far the shadow radiates out or how blurred it is. I might have gone a bit extreme there. Let's just adjust that slightly. Oh, yes, that's nice. Or even the colour of the shadow if you want to. 
And similarly with the reflection, let me just expand that. I can have a reflection. Again, I can decide how transparent I want that reflection to be and how far away from the image I want it to appear and the size of it. It's all fun stuff. But also while I've got this image selected, another option to mention, and that's cropping. So if I wanted to chop off the global logistics text and just have the little globe icon thing here, then look up at your toolbar. You can see I've got this crop image button. The adjusting handles change slightly so I can just click and drag to chop off the bottom bit there and then click away. And that's quite a nice effect. But if your marketing department is anything like mine, they won't like it if you meddle with the company logo. So again, look up at the toolbar. You've got this button here to reset the image. So if you choose that, It'll reset any color adjustments or any cropping, but you will have to turn off the shadow and the reflection manually. So we're back to where we were. Let's just pop in another image so that we can try out a few more options. So this time it's on my drive. So let me go and find it. My drive, there we go. And it's this one here. So let me just pop that in, insert. And you'll see this is quite a big picture and I want it to take up the whole slide. So I'm just going to stretch it to fit the shape of the slide there. And I'm also going to use the adjustments part of the format options panel down the side there to make it a bit washed out, to make it transparent. But the text isn't really readable behind it, so even better, I'm going to put that picture behind the text. So every object on your slide, every picture, every shape, every text box is in its own layer. And I would like this picture to be behind this text box so the text will be a bit more visible. So if you go to the arrange menu and choose order, well, I could step that picture backwards a layer at a time, or I could say, no, nope, just send all the way to the back, please. And then let's just adjust the size of that text box so that it's a bit more legible. Good, quite nice. And that's a perfectly acceptable way of working, but there is a danger that we click and move that graphic out of place by mistake, for example. So we might want to, instead of putting the graphic directly on the slide there and then putting it behind the text, we might want to instead put that graphic on the background. So look up on your toolbar, you've got this background option and that's where I can pick up. In fact, let's pick up the very same image from my Google Drive. So let's just choose that there and insert it. Click done. That will set that as the background image, which I, I now can't click on. And that's generally good because it means you can't move it out of place, but it also means that I can't then adjust it and make it a bit more washed out. But imagine if your design department or your marketing consultant has given you a graphic to use on the background of your slide that's already washed out and suitable for use behind text, then that would be the best place to add it through that background button. And to get rid of it, if you want to reset it back to the theme, which didn't of course have that graphic there as the background, then you can just click reset. And that's removed the background image. But of course, I also fiddled with this text box to accommodate the image so if I want to reset the position of those text boxes from the layout, then let me just reapply that layout and those text boxes are back to where they were. But let's just finish off this video by having a look at some other things we can do with shapes. So you already know that there are all sorts of shapes that we can add. So if you want to add in, for example, oh, I don't know, this cylinder, then just choose the shape and click and drag to draw it and you can move it around and resize it, rotate it, stretch it. Use the little diamonds there to adjust another dimension of the shape. And you can just click on a shape and start typing to add text. But let me just show you a few quick tips. So let's imagine you want to draw a perfect circle. Well, if you choose the circle shape, and of course you can click and drag to draw some sort of random oval shape, but if you hold down your shift key, then it'll make sure that it stays perfectly in proportion as a perfect circle. So that is a good tip. Or let me just go back to that insert shapes button. If you were to double click on a shape, it'll just stick in the default, which for things like squares and circles will also be a perfect square or a perfect circle. And to duplicate a shape, slightly quicker than copying and pasting it, if you press Control D on your keyboard, you'll get a duplicate. So let me just drag that to the side and let's just get another one there. And again, you can see those guides leaping into action there to help us align them and space them. But let's imagine I want to select all three of these shapes in order to group them. So I'm going to lasso those three shapes and then I think, Oh, well, what's going on here? It's also included these other text boxes. I'm going absolutely mad. Let me try that again. Ah, it still seems to have included the agenda title text box there. So if you want to lasso a collection of objects without including any overlapping objects, then hold down your Alt key while you click and drag, and it will only select the ones that you do click and drag around. But anyway, let's see what else we can do. With this speech bubble here, let's make it look a bit more dramatic. I can change the fill color. So let's use one of the accent colors that go with this theme. I can also make sure that the font style matches the theme or whatever I want it to be. Let's choose railway and let's also make it white so it stands out a little bit better. 
I can add a border around that shape. So let's choose, let's choose a, a fat border and let's make it, for example, um, a gray color. And we've got quite a few options for the text inside our shapes as well. So you'll remember that, of course, we can do alignment, but also that's where the vertical alignment will be. So if we want the text to be at the top of the shape or at the bottom of the shape or the middle of the shape, then we can use these options here. Let me put it back in the middle. But also over on the right hand side where we saw all of those different options that we've already been looking at, the text fitting one is going to be very useful to us here. And you can see I have already added a bit of an indent that's effectively increasing these margins at the left and right here to control how that text wraps. But you've also got special indentation for first line indents and hanging indents, my goodness, and also a bit of padding. And that just creates a gap between the text and the edge of the shape there. We got the same effect by adding an indent. But now I'm going to add in a line. So again, look up at your toolbar just next to the insert shape button. We've got some different lines that we can choose from. So I'm going to add a curvy line. So let's imagine when I go through the agenda, I know that as soon as I mention Q2 goals, people are going to want to ask questions. So I want to have a, a sort of a fun little line here that's going to lead me to this little speech bubble thing that says, don't worry, there'll be time for questions at the end. So I'm just clicking moving my mouse and then clicking again to draw a curvy line. It's a fun thing to play with. Double click to finish the line. And as you might imagine, I've got 101 different options I can use to play with that line. So again, look up at the toolbar. Let's make it a much fatter line. So maybe four points. I can change the color. I can change the line style, but also how the line starts and ends. So for example, I'd like that to be an arrow. And maybe at the beginning, I'd like oh this little sort of circle thing. Let me just click away so you can see how that looks. And if you click back on it and go to the format menu and choose borders and lines, you'll see all sorts of other options here, including, for example, the arrowhead size. So if you wanted that arrowhead at the end there to be a little bit bigger, let's just choose large and it's a fraction larger. But these kind of shapes where you effectively drew it yourself, if you right click, you've got this option here to edit points. So if you weren't very happy with exactly how it was curving, you can just drag on these little points there to change the uh, curviness of your shape that you drew. My goodness, the customizations are endless. Now for this shape, if I right click, I don't get that same edit points, but I can look at this, change the shape. So if I've changed my mind about the type of shape I want that to be, so let's say I'd rather it was a, a sort of a round edged call out speech bubble thing. I could choose that and it's changed the shape to that alternative call out. So my goodness, lots of options there for images and shapes, and I will leave you to experiment further if you choose to.